properly install FactSet as well as the FactSet plugins for Excel, PowerPoint and Word on your computer, you need a FactSet account, Microsoft Excel, at least for the Excel plugin, a semi-decent computer, so I would recommend at least 4 gigabytes of RAM at the bare minimum, and you need 2 gigabytes of unused space because the program needs to install itself, and in the final version it's about 1.3 gigabytes. Once you have all of these components, you simply open your internet browser, whether it's Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, it doesn't really matter, and you type in FactSet Software. Once you've entered FactSet Software, you, you go to the purple link below, which states Support Downloads. Once you are on the FactSet website, you go to the application slide on the right side of your screen. Here you click FactSet General Releases and you click the first item that pops up, which is the most recent and stably supported fact set for your Windows. If you have an iOS or an Android system, use either the fact set iOS or the fact set Android button. I would not recommend using this on an Android or on a phone. The software is usually way too heavy if you want to compile larger amounts of data, so I would recommend using it either on a Windows or on an iOS system. I would also not recommend installing an early adopter as these systems are usually full of bugs. It's better to wait a while if you're not that experienced or in desperate need of data and just download the general release. Once you've opened the general release tab, please click the download button given in blue near the 64-bit MSI 332 megabytes. This will give you the install file as given in the left corner of the screen and wait until this file has been downloaded. Once it has been downloaded, open the file and execute it. Once you are in your installer system, simply click next for the first slide. If you are on the private computer, which is not a work computer or something linked to a larger system, click the recommended FactSet install for all users. If this is not the case and you are either on a work server or for any other purpose need multiple accounts on your computer, click the only for me version of FactSet. In general, I would recommend installing it for the whole computer as this does not cause any issues with administrative rights. In this step, you can choose where you want to install your FactSet installation software. It's usually best if you have multiple drives on your computer to pick the fastest one to put the software at. So if you have an HDD and an SDD, put this fact set on your SDD because, that because the installation as well as the functioning of the program will be significantly faster. Usually the proper default function is already set, but you can change it by clicking the browse button. I would recommend in almost any instance to use the fastest drive that you have where you have at least say two gigabytes left. That's a bare minimum because otherwise you can't really run or install the program. When selecting the right location for your FactSet installation, you need to install the FactSet program. Simply click the install button and wait for about five to 10 minutes. It can be sooner or later, depending on your computer speed. Now, after the installation is finished, you click launch FactSet in the button or you simply search for FactSet near your programs and devices and then you open FactSet as I've done here. Now you need to click here on allow access at least twice to give FactSet access to your Microsoft firewall. This is needed as FactSet needs to upload information from the internet. After you've allowed FactSet access to your Microsoft firewall two things can happen. In here I have already installed my FactSet account. So if you have already installed your FactSet account, you'll just be shown a usual version of FactSet where you can do all the things you would like to. If you have not yet installed or logged in with your FactSet account for the first time, you need to log into this account. You get a very small pop-up in the center of the screen and it tells you to enter your FactSet username as well as password. It could be that it only asks you for your FactSet username and not your password. 
After this, you get another pop-up screen. This pop-up screen tells you to enter a certain verification code. This verification code will be sent to your email address if you are from the Open University, your Gmail address where you requested your FactSet account. So an email will be sent to your email address. You need to open it and then put in the code. It contains six digits. So don't be stressed if when you enter your credentials, you don't enter the software. You first need to go to your email and plug in the proper identification code. Once you've logged into the software and everything works out fine, you can here see the main screen of today. This basic screen tells you what the financial markets are doing, what's happening to the crude oil price, to the stock market indexes or futures or whatever proxy they're going to use. So now once you've logged into Factset and you have installed Factset and you have a username, you can actually start using it. How to use it will discuss in the upcoming videos. But for now, I want to stress that after entering your credentials, I would recommend that you restart your computer because after restarting the computer, the FactSet software will be more properly integrated. When I first opened FactSet without restarting it, the stock indexes, as you can see here, were all blank. But after installing, after restarting the computer, there are currently actually figures shown in the graph. So you need to first restart your computer and also close the Excel and Microsoft and basically anything from Microsoft before you install the fax set.